from WDTN, the station that's working for you. This is 2 News at 6. Now at 6, the FBI, local police and more searching a local property for any clue of a missing woman. What we're learning about that investigation still underway tonight. I thought I was going to die. Plus, surviving oh, the streets, die. we hear from survivors of human trafficking and ask questions on the effects it has on our own communities. Add a bit later, a bill to protect sexual assault victims in the military. Hear from local Congressman Mike Turner about his legislation prompted by the recent death of one of our local Marines. First at 6, a possible breakthrough in the search for a 25-year-old woman who's been missing since last year. Miamisburg Police, the FBI, the BCI have been investigating in Miamisburg since 8 o'clock this morning. They are searching a property on Lower Miamisburg Road. Crews tell us they are looking for any evidence, any clues, pointing them to the whereabouts of Chelsea Coe. Now, we first reported on Coe's disappearance back in September of last year. She is one of six women who have disappeared within a 35-mile radius in recent months in this area. And we have live team coverage from the search in Miamisburg and Chelsea's mother's house near Cincinnati. We'll start with 2 News reporter Ethan Fitzgerald, who joins us live. Mark and Brooke, for most of the morning, law enforcement wouldn't really tell us what they were doing digging at this property up lower Miamisburg Road. The only information that's been passed our way since is that they are looking for missing Chelsea Co. We called in a news helicopter from our sister station in Columbus to give us a better view of the scene. You could see FBI and BCI agents digging where a back patio once stood. Chelsea Co. has been missing since August of 2017 and is one of six women to disappear within a 35 mile radius of this area. Neighbors like Heather McGuire woke up to a flurry of lights. When I first came out, the streets were blocked. Um, there were police officers everywhere. This is a quiet neighborhood. Everyone gets along. It's just you don't see these things in Miamisburg. Miamisburg police say the search is directly related to Coe's disappearance, leaving neighbors feeling uneasy. I feel sick to my stomach. You know, I raised, I raised a family here. I raised a family here. I have grandchildren that come here. So for something like this, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's completely heartbreaking. It's devastating. The FBI and Ohio BCI have been digging up and collecting evidence from this property since 8 Tuesday morning. I, I really hope that they, that they find what they're looking for, but at the same time, that's terrifying to the rest of us. Neighbors have been watching the situation unfold all day. Here's some pictures they snapped from behind the property. Witnesses say they've seen agents remove several items from the area. And this is a live look off Lower Miamisburg Road. We've actually been seeing more emergency vehicles leaving the scene over the last few hours. And police did tell my um, photographer and I today that the homeowners were told to leave the property. We're unsure if there have been any arrests made in this case. We'll be sure to update you on air and online at WDTN.com. Reporting live in Miamisburg, Ethan Fitzgerald, 2 News, working for you. And we're also hearing from Chelsea Coe's mother tonight. She's been waiting for answers in this case since her daughter went missing. 2 News reporter Kristen Eskow joins our team coverage. She went to Adams County to talk with the mother today. In Brooke, Chelsea Coe's mother tells me she got a call this morning from Miamisburg police about where they were searching today. Now, earlier I spoke with her, and she says if her daughter's body is found, the news would obviously be devastating, but it would also bring closure. If it's her, I think my heart will be broken. It's not like um, your first daughter is any more special than the second or third. But your first daughter, you change. You become a different person. It's now been nearly a year since Shula Woodworth heard from her daughter. 25-year-old Chelsea Coe was last seen in early August leaving a friend's house. Since then, her family has gotten very few answers. Not knowing what happened to her, um, I just want to know. Um, it's, it's very difficult. It's like, you just wonder, is she being hurt? Is, does she need me? Is, is she dead? Woodworth says her daughter has struggled with heroin, but wouldn't just run off without reaching out to her. She says all these months later, people have continued getting the word out and help keep awareness alive. I've had people that didn't even know Chelsea that have, they pray for her at church every week and they're, they're posting about her and they're praying for me every week and I mean it means so much. It really does. Woodworth says she believes there's someone who knows what happened to her daughter. She hopes the person or people responsible are held accountable. Chelsea had her problems. 
Um, she doesn't deserve that. Nobody deserves to be hurt. And Chelsea is the oldest of Woodworth's four children. Woodworth is still waiting to hear back from police about the results of today's search. For now, we're live in Adams County. Kristen Escow, 2 News, working for you. Also at 6, you do not have to look far to find modern-day slavery right here in the Miami Valley. Survivors and law enforcement both say human trafficking is an issue that's growing right along with the opioid crisis. 2 News reporter Catherine Ross sat down with a survivor. She asked him questions about the effects on our community and the red flags we should all be looking for. It's lasted so long. Jennifer Vanderpool is covering up the scars of her past. This symbol forcibly tattooed on her by a pimp when she was only 11. It's a visible reminder of the invisible damage starting from the time she was nine. That was the beginning of the end for me. She says a family friend was molesting her and he threatened to hurt Jennifer's younger sisters if she told anyone. When an aunt discovered the abuse, she said she'd help ease the pain. She told me to close my eyes and give me her hand and trust her. And I did, and she shot me up. Heroin became Jennifer's medicine. One day, her aunt owed a dealer for the dosage. She put makeup on me and gave me medicine, took me to her drug dealer, and told me to close my eyes. And if it hurt, just relax, because it would be over soon. It wouldn't be the last time the aunt used Jennifer to repay drug debts. At one point, she says a dealer kidnapped her, smuggled her to Dark County with other young girls, and forced them to perform sex acts in hotels up and down I-75 for weeks. That began a cycle of addiction and trafficking, dominating her life for more than a decade. I just gave in. The Montgomery County Sheriff says the drug crisis is fueling those problems and draining solutions. Well, one problem we have with the opioid epidemic, we don't have enough resources, so we're understaffed. So we can only do so much. In 2017 in Ohio, the Attorney General's Human Trafficking Commission investigated more than 200 human trafficking cases. That was an almost 50% jump from the previous year. But the number of arrests and convictions both decreased. Sheriff Plummer says many victims are unwilling to testify against their traffickers. Many are too ashamed, too afraid, or too addicted to come forward at all. Most of Jennifer's pimps never served time for human trafficking. Her aunt became a victim of the drug crisis, dying from an overdose. A judge ultimately sentenced Jennifer to four years in prison on drug charges. Prison saved my life. Now clear headed and clean, Jennifer is rewriting her story. She's covering these marks, but also uncovering her experience to help others. And the more people that um, are aware of human trafficking and know the signs to look for, the more they could save somebody. Among those red flags, poor mental health and abnormal behavior, signs of physical abuse, few or no personal possessions, nude photos of themselves or others, and controlling older boyfriends. Victims like Jennifer encourage everyone to offer help, before judgment. When you see a woman on the street or in a hotel room or on a website, your first thought is that that's what she wants. You know, that she wants to be there, that this is what she likes, or no. Catherine Ross, 2 News, working for you. And our coverage of this important topic continues on WDTN.com. There you will find a list of resources. If you know someone who needs help escaping uh, human trafficking, just click on As Seen on 2 News at WDTN.com. Coming up, a man charged with the murder of a two-year-old learns his fate today. And a bit later, we're now one week away from the primary election, what the early voting numbers are showing for the Buckeye State. And more warm weather Wednesday, but rain chances will gradually climb. The complete Storm Team 2 forecast, it's just around the corner.
A 23-year-old man will spend 18 years to life in prison for causing the death of his girlfriend's son. In April, a jury found Ryan St. John guilty of murder, endangering children, and other charges. In February 2017, St. John was watching two-year-old Braden Ferguson when the boy stopped breathing. Braden died of severe blunt force trauma. St. John received the maximum sentence that he could. And a man will spend the rest of his life in jail for raping a seven-year-old girl. This comes to us from our partners at the Xenia Daily Gazette. 37-year-old Andre Estes was sentenced to life without parole Monday. During sentencing, the judge says Estes was a direct threat to the public. His attorney says they plan to appeal that decision. And look ahead, the West Liberty Salem shooter will learn his sentence tomorrow. 18-year-old Eli Cerna is set to be sentenced tomorrow morning up in Champaign County. He has pled guilty to attempted murder, felonious assault, and inducing panic charges back in April. Cerna is the one who shot his fellow student Logan Cole in January of 2017 inside a bathroom at West Liberty Salem High School. He could now face more than 23 years behind bars. Well, coming up, legislation introduced to help sexual assault victims in the U.S. military. Almost 10 years since the law for expedited transfers on bases was changed, and today Congressman Turner and Mary. Hard to believe, but it's now been more than 10 years since Maria Lauterbach and her unborn child were murdered in North Carolina. Now Congressman Mike Turner and her mother have carried on her legacy, enacting a bill to hopefully save the lives of future sexual assault victims in the military. Happening today, 2 News reporter Deborah Bogart is live with proposed changes. It's been almost 10 years since that law for expedited transfers on base for sexual assault victims was changed. But today, Congressman Turner and Mary Lauterbach both say there's still more work to be done. Now, backtracking to 2007, when Maria Lauterbach reported her sexual assault, the Vandalia Marine requested a base transfer and it was denied, leaving her in close proximity to her assaulter. Well, since her death, her mother has worked with Turner to get that law changed where victims can now see that expedited transfer. Just last year, I had the opportunity to go to bases, both in Korea and Japan, to speak. And at both of those bases, women came up to me and said expedited base transfer saved their life. Today, Turner saying even with that law passed, those who report sexual assault in context of domestic violence have not been permitted expedited transfer, bringing forth the Persist Against Military Sexual Trauma Act. We have dropped legislation 
that will close that loophole and make certain that those who are subject to domestic violence also have the ability uh, as victims of sexual assault uh, to seek expedited transfer. This will be included in the National Defense Authorization Act, which will pass the House of Representatives next week. Reporting live in downtown Day in Devereaux Bogart, 2 News working for you. More Buckeyes are voting early here on your local election headquarters. More than 220,000 ballots have been requested for the primary election, and more than 128,000 Ohioans have voted. That's more than at this same point in 2014. About 115,000 Democratic ballots have been requested and 91,000 Republican ballots. During next Tuesday's primary, voters will decide a statewide ballot issue on redistricting and vote on gubernatorial candidates, as well as decide many local races. The polls are open 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. May 8th. And Austin Lanning celebrating its newest addition this afternoon. Today, a beam raising ceremony was held for the new office building for Midmark Corporation. Uh, they provide equipment for medical, dental, and veterinary offices. This new building will also include other office space, restaurants, and retail options. And the final beam has been sitting in a nearby park area for the past week so people could sight it and write a message. For us, it's a moment for us, for, for the development to pause, recognize the accomplishments that have been made, um, celebrate that with other folks, say a lot of thank yous. And Austin Lanning says that new building will be up and running by October. Now, Chief Meteorologist Brian Davis and your Storm Team 2 forecast. Nice evening on the way. Generally clear skies dropping through the 70s and back into the upper 60s by 11 p.m. Then your forecast tomorrow, partly cloudy skies, 65, 8 o'clock, 77 at noon, and 81 at 5 p.m. Now there is a very slight chance we could see a spotty shower, maybe even a thunderstorm tomorrow afternoon as a little more moisture returns to the area, but that's not the case today. A red flag warning in effect until 8 p.m. with very dry conditions and that fire danger out there if you have any uh, open burning, uh, want to get a fire going this evening, uh, grill out, or uh, perhaps if you throw that cigarette butt out the window, you get a grass fire started with low humidity and the breezy conditions we have and uh, some uh, burnable material out there, that's for sure, all that dry grass. Wednesday, low 80s, I'm talking about the dead grass from last season here, Wednesday, low 80s expected, more humidity around the area too, and then we'll see those rain chances really go up for Thursday and into Friday. Check out the high temperatures tomorrow, upper 70s and low 80s here over western Ohio, and then we should cool back a little bit on Thursday into the upper 70s with a little more cloud cover and some rain around the area. No precipitation tonight on live Doppler 2 HD. A little bit of high cloudiness coming into western Indiana, eastern Illinois. Should stay fairly thin and drift through the area overnight, so we'll stay mostly clear, but that cold front gets closer to us later in the week and brings up our chances of rain. 78 degrees currently after a high this afternoon of 79. A southwest wind at 17 with a relative humidity, 24%. And you can see the temperatures tonight, upper 70s, low 80s around the region. Still 81 at Wapakoneta, 82 Salina and Troy. 80 degrees in Eaton and Springboro, but actually Dayton International, one of the cooler spots there at 78, along with 77 down at Wilmington. Our forecast this evening going for the mostly clear skies. We do have some showers and thunderstorms northwest of us across the western Great Lakes, and a little bit of that moisture could swing into the area tomorrow afternoon and early evening, but otherwise our really next good chance of rain, that'll be coming our way on Thursday. Showers and some thunderstorms will move into the area. There's even a marginal risk of some severe thunderstorms for Thursday. Your forecast tonight, mostly clear and mild, will drop down to 62 degrees of south-southwest wind at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. Tomorrow, partly sunny, breezy and warm, high 82, a southwest wind picking up again to 10 to 20. 73 degrees at 10 o'clock and 77 at noon, up around 80 at 2 p.m. and into the low 80s at 4 o'clock, 82, 80 degrees at 6 p.m. On Thursday, a better chance of those scattered showers and thunderstorms, 78. 74 the high on Friday with showers and thunderstorms more likely. And then we cool it off a little bit Saturday in the 50s in the morning, but a high of 75 with partly cloudy skies. On Sunday, uh, at least a chance of showers in 70, 68 expected for the high on Monday, and then we'll be back up to 74, and mostly sunny on Tuesday. So a little taste of summer in the air tomorrow. A little more humidity, so that 82 may feel a touch warmer.
I like May so far. Yeah. <laughs> Starting off well. Better in April. Thanks, Brian. Well, it's time now to honor one of the area's top student athletes. Now, sports director Jack Pohl introduces us to this school year's final Penn Station Athlete of the Month. We are here at Eaton High School, home of the Eagle! It is time for our Penn Station Athlete of the Month, Sarah Willis, everybody! Sarah Willis! Sarah Willis! Sarah is just an incredible golfer. She is a back-to-back -back state champion. Just the fourth girl to ever accomplish that feat. She is also the only female to ever win the SWBL Boys Championship. Let's just say she can play some golf. Ryan Drake from Hot 1029 is here with more. And she's very smart. 4.1 GPA, student council, class secretary. Uh, she pretty much involved in any group or activity you can imagine. And, and plans on attending Penn State University where she'll compete on the women's golf team. All right, let's bring in Deb Osterfeld from Penn Station with this month's presentation, Deb. Thank you, Jack. As usual, we have a plaque and a check for the school. Sarah gets a party of 10 at the Penn Station of her choice, which will be really fun. Uh, the kids are eligible for the $2,500. $100 Spirit Award. You all get a buy one, get one coupon at Penn Station. And most importantly, Sarah's eligible for our $10,000 college scholarship that we give away every May. Sarah, you just don't excel as a golfer, but also as a student. So that can't be easy. Both take a lot of concentration. How do you get it done? Just with my support system, my school, my family, of course, and all of my coaches, they just help me to get it all done. So I just really appreciate all their help. All right, let's hear it, guys. Sarah! Sarah Willis, everybody, our Penn Station Athlete of the Month. Two sports powered by Ford. Well, with barely enough time to catch their breath following that grueling seven-game opening round series against the Pacers, the Cavaliers return to action tonight as they open up the Easter Conference semifinals on the road north of the border against the Toronto Raptors. Um, just jumping from one team where you've uh, prepared for them every day for the last two weeks, seven games, and not, not having much time to prepare for you know, the, the number one team in the Eastern Conference this year. Um, it's going to be a challenge. Well, it's May 1st, and that means this Saturday it will be time for the Kentucky Derby. Today was the Derby draw with Justify, made as the early 3-1 to one favorite, with Mendelssohn, the second choice in the full 20-horse field. Justify will try and break a 135-year-old drought known as the Apollo Curse, coming out of the number 7 post. And it's all coming up this Saturday at Churchill Downs. You can watch it right here on Channel 2. The Reds returned to Great America Ballpark last night to open up a nine-game homestand. Cincinnati's offense continues to show a few signs of life, especially a. Eugenio Suarez, who's back in the lineup. The third baseman had two hits and four runs batted in against the Brewers, but Milwaukee had just enough to come back and win the game 6-5. to five. We, we were down twice in the game, came back, uh, had some nice rallies, and, uh, you know, they just uh, they, they came and took it from us. You know, we had it, and they took it from us. Homer Bailey goes to the Hill tonight for Cincinnati first pitch 7-10. All right. Thank you, Jack. Okay. Coming right back, Brian, we'll have another look at your forecast.
All right, Brian, a nice night out there, right? Oh, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful <laughs> evening out there. Take advantage of the nice weather. We'll be looking at mostly clear skies. Temperatures dropping through the 70s into the upper 60s by 11 p.m. South southwest winds still 10 to 20, but even those will back off to about 5 to 15 after sunset. All right, it's like new life out there. Thank you for joining us. We will see you again at 10 over on Dayton CW, then back here at 11. Yeah, get outside, enjoy the evening, but get back inside <laughs> for two news later tonight. NBC Nightly News is next tonight.